And now, Janet Kuypers. <laughs> Hi. I'm searching through this and looking for things that I don't didn't read often even then when I did these shows. So I'm going to pick three that I'd like to share with you from this book of past shows. Uh, this one is called How to Please a Woman. I saw a movie once. I can't remember what movie it was. But I remember this one scene. It was after a protagonist is very intimate with a woman, and in the middle of the night, he gets uh, the man gets up and he gets dressed to go outside. And no, it wasn't to leave. I know half of you are probably thinking that a minute. But he went outside into the garden and he picked a bunch of flowers and put them all over the bed. So in the morning, when she the woman woke up, well, she would be alone, but she would be surrounded in flowers. Now. I know it's just a movie, but I have these visions in my head of how perfect life is supposed to be. Okay, okay, call it being raised on Cinderella and Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, but in the back of my mind, I still want to have this vision in my head of being swept away. Wake me with a kiss. Ride me off into the sunset. I don't want to tell someone how to sweep me off my feet, how to be romantic. Part of the romance, uh, the, part of the romance is the element of surprise. Yes, I know this is the age of communication, and we're supposed to tell each other exactly how we feel. But I guess, as unreasonable as this is about to sound, I want you to be able to read my mind, <laughs> or or don't read it and completely catch me off guard. And I mean that in a good way. Don't catch me off guard, for instance, by like watching basketball instead of celebrating. My my birthday? <sighs> sure, it could be flowers, I guess, but I don't think that we're just trying to milk you for everything that you've got or that we're, you know, trying to get more out of you because flowers picked from your garden or someone else's <laughs> are often better than the ones that are from the store. Or maybe a bath or a picnic. Those are even better than flowers because they give us the gift we really want, time. We want to know you are not only taking time out of your day schedule for us to be with us, but you took that time off your plan to make it perfect. We want to. We want you to tell us we look pretty when we need to hear it, or you don't know when we need to actually hear it. Just look into our eyes. You'll know. We want you to look excited to see us when you come home from work, even if you're tired and you just want to eat. We want to feel like we mean the world to you, like we mean more than that beer that you drink when you've been sitting in front of the uh, TV on the couch just watching sitcoms. We want poetry written about us, that the sun sets and nothing matters without us, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, you're not a poet. Maybe you could write us a letter every once in a while. Oh, I know, it's that stupid time thing again. I know it's difficult, but that's what it's all about, remember? Even a note just saying, I love you, on it could be enough. Here's an idea, drop it in the mail. I know you see us every day, but that's what makes it special. at the library that was five blocks from where I was raised. It was really weird. I'm like, really? I'm going back out here to do... Um, this is a short piece called More Than We Should Have. When I think of him, I usually think about the drinking. Actually, I never think of him as drinking, come to think of it. I just think of him as drunk. I, I don't always see the drinks in his hand, but his perception of the world is always altered. But someone reminded me tonight of when he would work outside in the cold Chicago winters, and he would come back from with his mustache all frozen, and there would be little icicles hanging down toward his mouth. And then I thought of when he picked me up at the airport, and he wanted a shrimp at the cocktail lounge, and he drank and ate and I waited. And as we left, we tried to pay the expressway toll with pennies, <laughs> but some of the coins fell onto the street and we just rushed to throw more change at the machine. We paid more than we should have. I'm sure we did. <laughs> Since I talked about 
accident stuff. This was from a show that was called Death and Reboot because it happened to be on the anniversary of the accident. I was like, well, I'm gonna have to do, you know, and I had some pieces that I wrote like in the hospital because that was your salvation. <laughs> you're, you're alone and I'm like, give me something to write with. Um, and this was one piece from it. It's called Everyone Else Does It. It's funny, how do you get an image in your head of how you want to lead your life? And you have these ideas, and maybe they're not like anyone else's ideas, but this is how you think, and you find out that the, the, this is how you find out that it, it works for you. It, well, they're, even if they're your ideas, you might get tired of thinking that way, even if everyone else is thinking something different. Well, you might force yourself to think differently then, but what do you do with all those original ideas once you force yourself to change them? Would you just throw these thoughts into the trash, into the garbage? You could do that, you know. I know they're just your ideas, but everyone else does it. You could do it too.